welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily. The show that keeps you up to date on fans of Liquid Transfer News to Arsenal. Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a January transfer move to Arsenal. Oh, what can I say? What a depressing Monday morning it is to be an Arsenal fan. Um, that was really hard to take yesterday it really was um going out of the FA Cup in the third round at home to Liverpool in a game that on the whole we dominated we played really really well in especially in that first half we created chance after chance after chance but yet again we were profligate in front of goal we didn't take our chances and then yet again got punished on a set piece um, and then, you know, the second goal, listen, we, we're going gun ho trying to see if we can get back in the game. And we go out of the FA Cup um, last year, the fourth round, previous year, the third round. I mean, since we've won it, um, when Mikel Arteta first come in, we've literally gone out early in every single round. And um, it's very damning on what we're seeing at the moment with Arsenal. 43 shots in the last two home games, 43 shots, no goals. Unbelievable. Yesterday, we had so many chances. A chance that Reese Nelson had right at the start of the game um, where he should just chip it, tries to do too much. Havertz, the header, wide. Um, he had several chances where he overplayed or took that extra touch and... That is where you need a clinical striker. If you ever needed evidence enough to see what Arsenal need is a striker, all you have to do is look at yesterday's game. All you have to do is look at the West Ham game. All you have to do is look at the game when we played Aston Villa away. Again, lots of chances, lots of possession, great build-up play up until the box until it comes to that. Put the ball away. Score the goal. We are just not scoring. Even if you look at a lot of the goals we've scored this season, a lot of them have been from set pieces. From open play, we create so much and just don't put the chances away. If this team had a prolific striker, what would we be doing right now? How many of those defeats that we've suffered this season would have been defeats? I mean... It's something that we have to try and solve. But the problem is, who? And uh, Mikel Arteta was asked about it. It's obvious to the whole world that we need a striker. Mikel Arteta was asked about it. Um, and he said, this was his quotes, at the moment, it doesn't look realistic. My job is to improve the players that we have. <sighs> I get it. It's really difficult to get a striker in this month. It was even really difficult to get a top-class striker in in the summer. I see where he and the board are coming from. They want some of the highest quality as a striker when they bring them in, and it's getting that player that's available. But we need it. Gabriel Jesus out injured again yesterday. His injury record is starting to look absolutely horrendous. This is about the third time he's been out this season. We know he missed the, literally half of last season. We need a striker. We need a striker, and we need a striker desperately. But it is difficult to get that striker in. The obvious striker that we all know is Ivan Tony, a guy that could come in, hit the ground running immediately because he's Premier League ready. He knows the Premier League inside out. And he's a top, top player. However, I think today that is completely over. You won't even be hearing me do Ivan Tony Daly no more because it's done. Um, he came out, he did an interview for Sky TV. And in that interview, he spoke about his need to repay Brentford. Of course, he's been um, out for eight months um, because of this ban to do with uh, betting. He got banned for eight months. He's been out. Um, and he spoke in an exclusive interview with Sky about his need to repay Brentford, to repay the manager, to repay the players and the fans who've all stood by him during this really bad period for him where he's had to just sit out all football. He also spoke about um, the fact that he wants to come in and keep the team up, of course, 
Brentford, their form's probably even worse than ours at the moment. They've lost their last five games and they're staring relegation in the face. And um, he wants to help them to get out of it. And I spoke about before how some of their key players in Buermo injured, Wissa away at the African Cup of Nations. Um, so I think now we know that he's definitely staying, at least until the summer. We are not going to be able to get Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony is staying put at Brentford and he's sort of made that official today. So that's one we're definitely not going to get. Hence probably why you heard Arteta speaking like that yesterday, because they would have known that. They would have sounded him out um, and they would have got that vibe coming back. The thing is about it is that it's probably going to have to be a summer move for somebody like that. But what about somebody like Dominic Solanke? Now, the Daily Star claiming today that Arteta's willing to sell Eddie Nketiah and some other players, if possible, to fund a move for Dominic Solanke. Dominic Solanke's been having an incredible season um, at Bournemouth. He's been banging in the goals, one of the most informed strikers in the country right now. Again, the appeal is a player that can hit the ground running. But I ask you guys this, is Dominic Solanke the answer? Think about this very carefully, right? Whoever the striker it is who comes in, it's not just for the next five months until the end of the season that you want this guy to come in and do the business. You want someone who's going to come in and do the business till the end of the season, but also be that long-term world-class striker that Arsenal have been craving for years. Is that Dominic Solanke? Or is it that a player like Dominic Solanke would come in, be okay, and then in six months' time, we're all back here again saying, oh, we need a world-class striker. Solanke's all right, but you get my meaning. These are the considerations that have to be taken into place. I know we want to win the league. Obviously, we want to win the league. Obviously, we know we need a striker now. But these things, the long-term nature of it has to be taken into account. We know that the guys we've got at the moment are not clinical enough. They're great players, but, you know, Havertz, how many chances did he have yesterday? But could Solanke end up being another Havertz? Um, I want to I hear from you guys in the comments on it. Should Arsenal go all out for this guy, Victor Osimhen? Now, we've been told about financial fair play situation. The truth of the matter is nobody specifically knows what our situation is with financial fair play. They know that we're probably up towards the limits, but it's about who could we sell? Who could we move on? Who could we possibly say move on in the summer so that we could open up some space then to go and make a big signing? Could the owners put some of their own money in? Um, Josh Kroenke was at the game yesterday. We know that with some of their um, American teams, they've gone out there and they bought in Big players. Now, listen, they've done that at Arsenal. In the summer, they brought in Declan Rice. But could they move for a Victor Osimhen? He's available if you meet that release clause, which is said to be £112 million. It's a lot of money. It's something that, you know, you can't get away from. If you've got a world-class striker, you know, and this guy is world-class, you know, he's African player of the year. He's just, um, you know, last year won Serie A and he was a major part of Napoli winning that for the first time in decades. Could Arsenal go and meet the release clause for a player like Victor Osimhen? There's been lots of rumours that Chelsea are looking at doing that. There's, you know, even this month, there's been lots of rumours. I, I, it's possibly going to be a summer move, if I'm being 100% honest. But the rumours are is that Victor Osimhen would welcome a move to England. Um, even though he signed a new contract recently, in that contract has got this release clause. And the interesting thing about it is that, re- you know, um, his previous contract didn't have a release clause in it. But they put this thing in with £112 million release clause. And I think that was a sweetener to get him to sign a new contract. But he would move if that release clause is met. Chelsea trying to tempt him. <sighs> Listen, we've got Champions League football at the moment. Um, hopefully, we'll have Champions League football next year. Chelsea, unless they, you know, well, how are they going to get Champions League football next year? Where the position that they're in at the moment, highly unlikely. Should Arsenal now just go and make that big move and try and bring a play like this in? Because it is so obvious what is missing. Playing great football. 
you know, although we do got to start to learn how to defend set pieces as well. That's another issue right now. Talking of defenders, we're linked as well. <laughs> this one will pee off all Arsenal fans this morning. The last thing they want to hear, Mark Kukurea of Chelsea. <laughs> um, Kukurea uh, is said to be available. Chelsea want to offload him. They paid £62 million for Mark Kukurea back in 2022. He's got a contract till 2028. You know them mad contracts that Chelsea are on? This is one of those where they start to run into problems He's flopped at Chelsea. Um, I think he's out injured at the moment. But uh, journalist Simon Phillips claiming that Arsenal are said to be interested in him. Now, I don't know what how much is in this. This is He said he's heard some whispers that Arsenal are interested. Kukure is injured at the moment anyway. He's a left back. Listen, when he was at um, Brighton, he looked a great player. He looked a great little player. I remember him playing against us um, in one game and really, really doing bits. But... Mark Kukurea, that would not go down well with Arsenal fans right now. Um, that's the last thing they want to hear, but that's one of the rumours out there today. And uh, this player, Estavio of Palmeiras, is being linked with um, Arsenal. He's a 16-year-old wonder kid. He plays over there in Brazil as a right winger. Um, he's being praised to the hills. Everybody's saying that this guy is uh, another one of those special talents that come out from Brazil and Arsenal said to be one of the many clubs interested in him, big clubs. Um, Manchester City won him, Chelsea interested in him, Manchester United and PSG among the admirers of this player, Estavio of Palmeiras. Problem is he's still only 16. According to the rules over there in Brazil, you can't get to move until he's 18 anyway, but they're all hovering for him already. And Arsenal uh, said to be one of these players, one of these clubs that are very interested in, um, according to all the outlets over there in Brazil. But listen, that's not what we need right now, a 16-year-old Brazilian, right? Or rumours of that. What we need is a striker. I want you guys out there today, here's your homework, yeah? Give me a list of strikers that you think are obtainable, that you think would come in and would be great for Arsenal, not just for now until the end of the season, which finishes in May, but going forward for the next couple of years. Give me a list of available strikers that Arsenal could get. I would really love to hear from you guys. Um, it's the problem we got right now. We can't hit the back of the net. If we could hit the back of the net, everybody would be, you know, but if we can't hit the back of the net... <sighs> The only thing I'm going to leave you guys with is that, you know, I've seen a lot of people really getting carried away, really getting... Uh, listen, as bad as the form's been recently, as bad as the amount of goals that have been missed recently, I've said, this is the only hope that, that I'd... The, or the only thing of optimism I have is that it ain't going to continue like this. And when they do get it right, we could go on a great run and we could really turn things around. But ultimately, to win the league, we need a striker. Thanks for watching the show. And I'll see you tomorrow.